All right, welcome to the last meeting of 2023 for the OnCreds specification and OnCreds working group. Um, eliminating the need for the OnCreds JSON LD. This is far too late coming, but I apologize. But hopefully, I've got it all cleared out and nailed based on some back and forth with Manu and things. Um, Aries uh, issue credential and present attachment format. Sounds like Timo, you've done some thinking. I've done some thinking. I've got some stuff laid out as well. So we'll have a discussion on that. Um, reminder, this is a Linux Foundation, Hyperledger Foundation meeting. So the antitrust policy is in effect, which is on the screen. And the code of conduct is linked in. All right. Um, any other introductions, announcements, anything to add to the agenda? Otherwise, we'll jump right into it. All right. Um, special at context. Um, Artem, I'm hoping you can still do something about this. Um, I'm hoping the changes are, are really small, um, mostly eliminating or moving things, but um, want to get your feedback on that. Um, I put a HackMD document that I shared around, and then I've got a presentation um, to go over sort of what the points are. Um, I assume you can see my screen, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So summary is, um, so got a hack MD, a why, and proposal for how, which is basically going to the data integrity proof and then hiding anything we need. Credential status and the predicate format are the most interesting things. Um, add the most complexity to it. So I thought I'd throw a little bit out there on that. Um, the why is because um, if we include it, even though it's only for an on-creds, the context does get um, included with uh, the, the signature for, uh, you know, if we attach two proofs, um, the context gets included and the general handling of uh, by a non-creds processor, sorry, by JSON LD processors is they won't load a context they don't know at build time. And so to introduce a new context um, would prevent the processing of non and non-creds um, signatures. So that's why Manu was so pushing hard against it is that even though um, it is helpful for an on creds. It's not helpful for non and on creds. Those that want to, um, it, if we, if we were to issue it to a holder and then the holder present it to a verifier, the verifier would refuse to process it because it would have a context they didn't know about at build time. So they don't do any dynamic runtime loading. Um, in theory, we could keep it for non creds W three C. Um, verified uh, verify presentations format for the same reasoning in that um, if you are presenting in a non-creds by definition, whoever you are presenting it to understands and will process an on-creds proofs. So um, that argument would be, um, you know, th they would allow it, um, but my feeling is we probably should continue forward and just eliminate it overall. So the first part of it is um, to use data integrity proof um, for, and then the value of crypto suite. So when you use crypto suite, when you use, when you use the type, you need to specify in the context information about the type. And um, by using crypto suite though, um, it's similar to a type. It has values, but you do not have to have um, the the crypto suite value specified in a context. You can just put an arbitrary string in there, and the handling of the proof value is dependent on that string. So the only thing you can mess with, if you will, can 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 play with is the content of the proof value field but you can more or less put whatever you want in that. And so my, uh, my thought is we have three values. 
that would go into um, the crypto suite and on creds VC 2023 and on creds Pres VC, so presentation VC 2023, and an on VP. So these latter two would go into the um, to the two proof um, entries. Uh, this one for all of the each VC within a, pre, a verifiable presentation for, for each derived source VC, and then this one for the VP itself. And so if we look at, um, jump to the revised, um, this is what a VP would look like. So there's a proof on each of the verifiable credentials within a VP. So this would be an array. You could have multiple source verifiable credentials. Um, you have a crypto suite for each of those and then a different one. And that's because the proof value format is different for um, the, VC versus the VP. You've got different things in the proof value. Um, that eliminates the need for a credential schema, eliminates the need for the credential status. And I'll talk about that later. And the identifiers, which are the only things, the actual data elements that you lose, those, those would move to the proof value. So basically, we're going to have to move um, the VC and VP into the proof value, which is kind of annoying, but um, acceptable. Um, the loss is you cannot look at a, a, a verifiable credential in this format and see the, um, the type. I see some chat there. I, I don't think it's really necessary. Um, I, I, we, I could make the string longer to add the prez, um, but I don't, I don't think it's really worth it, but, but I guess I could check with what uh, Manu thinks. I didn't think it was that serious. Um, I think he, I guess we could eliminate the one and, and just, make it recognizable and do VC and VP. So combine these two. Um, I'm, I'm open to that suggestion. Um, I don't know. Um, interesting idea. So I'm just reading Timo's comment there about eliminating this one and just using this one and detecting the difference between the two, sort of sniffing the value and, and detecting that it's different between the two. So you've got the first thing the, the processor does is recognize the difference between the two. Would, do you think that's better, Timo? Um, no, not necessarily. I just saw Manu mm -hmm. suggested it in his email. So yeah. if, if he suggested, he probably has a reason do so um I so i was just curious why you yeah. didn't like include that suggestion from him yeah i i his question was did i need did i have it as a typo he thought i had made a mistake but i had been very deliberate in putting that there as different um I'll, I'll go back to him and do a quick um back and forth with him on that in that chain i should have sent him a message on friday about that Um, supporting VCDM11 versus 2.0, um, the only thing, oh, I see Andrew's joined, um, I'll go back one, Andrew, <laughs> just so you know, we want to eliminate the app context, it is a good idea to do, I agree, now that I've thought about it with non and non credits processors of proofs, um, the major technique we use is to use the data integrity proof as the type of the proof and to have crypto suites, three crypto suite values to hide the, the to put, uh, to understand what the proof value is and 
Um, in doing that, moving the identifiers, which are the, the data elements that we need, moved into the proof value. So the next thing is, do we support VCDM 1.1 versus 2.0? Um, here's where I, I could use a little help on Rust and what's the best way to do this. But basically, it's a, it's a minor difference. For, for VCDM 1.1, we need to add an extra context for data integrity proof. For 2.0, the data integrity proof is included in the uh, VCDM at context. So that's the only difference up there is, is what we put into the at context values, hard code into the at, co at context values, and then the issuer issuance date changes to valid from. Um, I believe those are the only two changes that would impact us from 1.1 to 2.0. It would be nice um, so that uh, so that we could put an if then else piece of code in so that we could um, change it, change it not dynamically, but but at coding time, I think. Um, so so we would actually code in the differences, but hard code that oh we support one point one or we support two point zero, and it would just do it. Uh, Timo. Um. Yeah, this is a question I uh, ran into today, and I was curious, like in the difference between v1.1 and 2.0, um, would it be possible for a credential to be compliant with both versions as the, ver as, the, as the difference are so minimal? Or would that be not be possible with like the differences no. in context URLs? No, because you have to have the at context of to be either the 1.1 the or the 2.0 at context. So the very first one is, so if I switch over to here, it's this line right here. Um, there's a specific context for the two V2. Um, so yeah. you have to pick one or the other. And then this line gets added if you're using the 1.1 and this line and, and this data, this information is included if you, pick the, the 2.0 up here. Does that make sense? Andrew? Yeah. Um, I think one, one other difference is for 1.1, we need an add vocab rule for the attributes. Oh, okay. Because it's included in 2.0. Okay. okay. Does that mean you then don't have to define every variable anymore so it, it will like allow to be issued without um, a custom context for your custom properties yes there's a, a default context uh yeah a default namespace rather for undefined terms that's nice okay um that that is a not a bad difference. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, what about this idea in Rust? I, I don't know. Does it make sense to have a little flag, even if it's hard coded to say, so that the, the differences between the two are defined in the code and switching between them just means changing the variable. Does that make sense to do? Yeah, I, I think there's only a few things that need to be adjusted for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's reasonable that it be just a, uh, I mean, a compile time, a, you know, a coding time flag, even though you can't really time. apply. I, I believe so. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So that's that. And I think we leave it at 1.1 and um, put those in and then um, and then just have the code in there and the differences for what 2.0 would look like so we know how to change it easily. Um, 
credential status suggestions. So the idea we originally had was, oh, let's just put the credential status and we put the reverage value into there. Um, it doesn't really do much for us. So, so moving the reverage value into proof value, again, the, the loss is human visibility. Um, I put in a few options into that document to say, well, the way you could, the way you could improve it where you have multi-proof VCs is you could implement a parallel status list 2021 credential. Um, and then you have to revoke in two ways, which, which is of course horrible, but you, you implement the two of them. And then the other thing we could do is have a hyperledger and on creds artifact that basically returns a status list 2021 object derived from the Anoncred's reverage. And I think that would be very easy to do. Um, all it would do would be to monitor the, the reverage of the identifier it got and return, return back a bit array in the format required by status list 2021. So, my thought is I put an issue in that somebody could implement. If we do that, then, then status list 2021, the credential status could be a, a status list 2021 type thing, not a specialized one for a non-creds. Um, but that's a future thing. I don't plan on doing that or suggest it. All I wanna do right now is we simply don't include any credential status, even if it is a revocable credential and the reverage ID goes into the proof value. Hope that makes sense. And then finally, this one, um, changing this would be relatively easy, um, except for the darn array thing. <laughs> um, so I'm suggesting just doing some sort of delimited string um, I know it's ugly, but in, in the vast majority of cases, it'll just be a single value and we just do it as, as the age is a, a value of a string and so that it's no different, doesn't need any type, doesn't need any definition. Is this okay? Um, what do you think of uh, here of, of minus suggestion to, I think you suggested to try to get it into um, the VC data model V2. I, um, yeah, I sent him an email saying I fully support that, um, but I don't think it helps us enough today to do that. And I don't think it'll be accepted. If it is, that's fine. But for now, I think we just go with something like this so we don't have to mess with an app. app. This is only in, this would only ever be delivered to a, an anoncreds verifier that has requested an anoncreds verified presentation. So this has, this is completely independent. This is entirely within anoncreds only. So there's no um, sort of broader context for it. Yeah, no, I think I just, uh, uh, the, the goal would then of course be to have it in a more like, generic way that could be supported by other yes. uh, crypto formats in the future. And so yeah. then wallets won't have to implement the Anacred's way of doing predicates, but it would be more of like, how do you do predicates in a, in a VP? Well, the, the more interesting thing for Anacred's is like we support, Anacred's V2 supports many more things than this. And so that also becomes an issue for a non -creds. Like this is not sufficient for a non -creds too. So as a future proofing, it doesn't really help. It doesn't get us very far. You know, how do you specify a membership, a set membership in here or something like that? Like it, do, it just doesn't help. It could be valuable to look at like, maybe we can't get it as part of like verify credential data model V2, but it could be like a separate context that you could add in, which is like, I don't know, a proof, some like 
uh, uh, like uh, advanced proofs uh, types where you have like predicate where we start with that one for now and like it could also include like other types of advanced yeah. proof mechanisms that you can add to a, um, a VP and if you want to support these advanced ones you only need to support like that specific context URL yeah um, again given that we want to implement this immediately <laughs> um, I don't think that's really an option so I'm happy to as I said to to Manu happy to help in whatever way he needs to to build something in the in the um, BC working group but for what we're trying to accomplish which is um, delivering on creds in w3c format I think this is sufficient um, is there a better way than this that anyone can think of, or is this okay? Like it seems this would be a trivial change in what we've implemented, and as I say, it it really is just for human consumption anyway. Um, from a processing, one assumes all we're doing is looking at the actual um, uh, proof of the predicate itself or predicates, the proofs. Since yeah, it's... I mean, this seems a little prone to uh, abuse, I guess. If, if the verifier decides to just look at what's in the credential status, uh, sorry, credential subject block, instead of using the non creds methods to pull out uh, the attributes. Um, you know, they could just parse this out and then end up with that string for value of the attributes. Oh, I see what you mean. Um, so, so would you do age underscore predicate? <laughs> hmm. I mean, most likely if, if we couldn't format it in the array format, because we would we wouldn't have a way to define this type um, or the predicate term or the value term there. Um, I would probably just put it right into the proof value and not try to make it human readable. What about do we just do these two? Um, predicates and value would still be undefined terms here, but I mean they would be in the the default namespace. Would they be? Yeah, would they would be covered by vocab. Yeah. So if we just drop type, the vocab is not defined in in v one dot one, right? But we, we would add it. So that's what Andrew said earlier is, um, sorry, it's on this one. We would have to add the vocab in the 1.1. And in 2.0, we wouldn't because both are included. And, and who would add that? Because we're trying to get rid of the custom context. So would um, every user of Anocrats then have to add that or? Uh, that that would go automatically into the um, into here, so we would add it right here. Th these are hard coded values in an onCreds, so that we would just be putting these in hard coded, and so we would have to have the third whatever the form of of doing um, vocab is. What does it look like, Andrew? Um, I can copy it here. Right. Doesn't go in like that, does it? Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. I get it. Okay. So it would go like that. And we drop that. 
So this would be hard coded to this. I notice I have to include it as well down below. So it would have to be here as well. But um, neither of these things have to be, these are just hard coded values. So it's not something that a non credits is introducing and anyone that is processing you know, some other proof type, and it's particularly up here, if there's another proof type like an ED25519, they would be happy to pro process both of those. So it wouldn't cause grief like having it in a non credits one would. So again, what do you think? Can we settle on this? So you think is the feeling this would be a better way to go with and remove the um, remo simply remove the type and rely on the default vocab to to specify these. Um, the like the RDF expansion of this is kind of ugly. Yeah, and. If it ever does get, if it, this kind of thing does get formalized in the data model, it, that representation will change. Yeah. I, I mean, this is ugly no matter what, but again, if, if we assume we have no option to include any sort of type in here, that eliminates, we can't include this because we don't have any place to define this type. Well, the, I think the type just gets expanded, um, just gets added to that default namespace as well. So you think we could leave this in here even? Oh, so you're saying we could leave a type in and just not, and not define it. Yeah, I'd have to run it through an RDF processor to check, but. Okay. So we just leave it as is and just ignore the fact that there's no such thing as a non credits predicate defined anywhere. Good. Okay. Which gets to more where you're, where both Manu is trying to go and what Timo suggested earlier, which is we try to keep it <laughs> the same. Okay. So we just leave this as is. Could you verify that, Andrew? It's, I don't know if you can do that on the fly, but if you could verify that, that would be good. Um, I need the HackMD link. Okay. Uh, there it is. Oh, there's no predicate in this. Oh, yes, there is. Yeah, so you'll have to tweak the um, proof at the bottom. Let me see. Okay. And I'll just on the fly here get this added to just so we got it. All right. Um, so the final would be so have some sort of part coded flag in the repo so that when we need to, we can switch from VDM one to two simply by changing a, a hard coded variable. Eliminate the um, and on creds in VC and VP. Use data integrity proof with the crypto suites. We need to have three. So for now, we'll go with three. Um, move the required data out of the credential into the proof value. And basically, those are the identifiers, schema, cred def, and rep reg. Um, we're going to not make this change pending Andrew's 
quick investigation. And the result is we have uh, we have the two in here that we get, and I still need to fix this then. Does that sound reasonable? Now, Artem, are you able, willing to make that change? Yeah, it seems quite small change and easier. I appreciate it. I'm sorry it's so late, but I'd really appreciate it if you would. We would really appreciate it if you could get that done. Um, I am getting a syntax error on the app vocab. Maybe I'm not remembering the... Oh, okay. I remember it being like an app base yeah, as well. It, um, hang on one sec. We could look at... I believe you had it in these, so... Yeah, here it is. Oh, I see. Look. See how it is? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. I knew there was something weird about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right, we'll leave it at that. Um, the next one, let us know, Andrew, what you find. The next topic is the um, the format. So this is this is now into the what the two teams, um, uh, what's cooking and Animo are going to do in AFJ and Akapai, and. The issue is um, this uh, idea of a new attachment. I've done some thinking about it as well. So Timo, um, why don't you go ahead since you presented last week um, and then I'll follow up with what I've been thinking as well on this. Do you wanna do it that way? Not hearing you, Timo. Can you hear me or? Now we can. Do you want to share a screen? Yeah. Share. Oh, can you see this? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so. I presented an attachment format for issuing Do2C credentials during the Airs working group last week. Um, got some feedback from that. Um, and based on that, I made some changes. Um, I think one piece of feedback was to, like, I, I added, like, a way to do different formats. So, JWT credentials and JSON-LD. Um, but that added another layer of abstractions. And you already have multiple attachment formats. So... Um, I think the main change I made um, from last uh, Wednesday's call is just focusing on data integrity um, proofs in this attachment format. And then uh, if you want to issue a DWTC, JWT credential, doing um, it with another attachment format that will be defined. Um, so it's still a work in progress, but like, I think most of the features are at least in there right now. Um, where this is a credential offer attachment where you can um, indicate which binding methods um, there are supported. Um, and based on that, um, uh, you can send a request and that allows you to do both anocreds issuance, but also like ED25519 issuance if you want that. And there's different binding methods that are defined in this RFC. 
In this case, you have Anocrit's link secret. Uh, we can also just call it Anocrit's binding, um, um, where we define the needed fields for an Anocrit offer. And as well, we have, in this case, a DITCOM signed attachment. So you can do uh, using a signed attachment. And in this case, we support like did key and did web binding using Edward signatures. Um, we can include an offer of the VC and we can include some options. These are still to be defined. It will probably be very similar to the current JSON-LD attachment format. Um, and then in the credential request, I can include a binding proof based on the binding methods that have been defined in the offer. And that could then be an Anocrats link secret or a uh, DITCOM signed attachment, or I could also include multiple, and that would allow um, issuing a credential that is both an Anocrat credential as well as like bound to uh, uh, a DIT, for example. And then finally, the last method will contain the VC, which can be a proof object or an array if you have multiple. Um, and then more down here. I have to find like the different binding methods and this could be more, could be added in the future. If there's like uh, other ways you want to do binding, if there's some like hardware uh, based binding you want to do, we could just define a new one in here that would allow to do the binding process based on hardware bound keys, for example, um, if you need custom uh, properties for that. So I think in that way, it's extensible um, to also include other binding methods. Um, I added something in for like which data model version should support it. I'm still not really sure on this and, and um, what we want to do with it. Do you think it would be good to make this attachment format flexible in which data model version it supports, uh, but not sure yet how we want to do that. Um, and maybe that should also just be like, again, another attachment format where it is like we have a V1 and a V2 data model um, one, if that's the way to go. Um, I think one other thing I wasn't really sure about, is like you see a lot that you can indicate, like uh, that's currently what we have in the current protocol that you can indicate which crypto suits are supported. And if I look at how OpenID is doing it, their stance is that it's not really relevant to the holder of a credential which crypto suit will be used by the issuer to issue a credential uh, because the holder does not need to verify the credential itself. It just needs to be able to present it to a, um, um, to a verifier, um, which in this case of Anocrats is a bit more difficult because you need to have very deep understanding of Anocrats to be able to create a proof. But for like normal credentials, uh, uh, you just have to make like a proof of the credentials object, so the binding method. Um, so I'm still not sure like which it's metadata needs to be included. <laughs> That's the same. I'm thing. sorry. It is the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, but so but there the difference there is is uh, it it does matter because they um, the crypto suit supported uh, for them is like which crypto support uh, suits are supported for the holder binding and not for the uh, the suit the issuer uses. So mm. I could use an um, yeah. Yeah. an RSA key to do the holder binding, but the issuer could then issue a credential using ED2549, yeah. and that's okay. Yeah. yeah, understand. Yes. Yeah. Um. So that's currently uh, what I have for the uh, uh, offer attachment. It's still a bit sloppy, but like I think the base things, features are in there. Uh, and I didn't want to work, uh, spend a lot more time on like all the details until like we have some like consensus on like, is this a good way to go? Okay. Any comments from anyone? I, I think this looks pretty good. Um, definitely a bit familiar from the open ID side of things. I don't quite understand what didcom signed attachment means in the context, but like, wouldn't it just be a, 
GWS or, or something? Yeah, so you would use a DITCOM signed attachment to do, um, basically, you would sign uh, this payload uh, with like a nonce in an audience um, with a specific key. And then basically, because you have signed it, um, the issuer knows you are the owner of that key. So then it can use that as the credential subject ID. And I use DITCOM signed attachment because that's a way in um, DITCOM that allows you to do signatures on content. Um, so yeah, it's just a JWS. Okay, yeah, I, I, I get it. It's just that we're already in DIDCOM, so the DIDCOM bit seems a bit redundant. Um, but I, I guess it's, it might be clearer this way that what level it's at. It's not inside the payload. All right. Um, if you could let me uh, have share back and I'll go through a presentation. So what I'm trying to figure out is how, um, you know, given that we're, there's, there's relatively little time in the code with us, um, what is the best way to, um, to uh, share, to uh, to present, sorry, what attachments to use. So I started thinking about that and going through what's the best choice short and long-term. So, um, you know, obviously we wanna get the balance right between them and I've got a slide on that. So we've got sort of existing attachments um, RFC 592, which is called the indie attachments. There's an RFC 0771 that is the same as the indie attachments, but it's properly called now the non-creds attachments. Uh, it is in proposed and, and um, hasn't had a lot done to it. Um, so in theory, we could adjust one or either of those. We have the JSON LD credential attachments and the RFC 510 presentation exchange attachments, which were used and, and are implemented, um, I believe in both um, libraries to do JSON-LD um, verifiable credentials. So W3C format JSON-LD, and because that's exactly what we're doing this time, we could in theory use those attachments, presentation exchange, um, use is a little bit different. And then we've got um, Timo's proposed, and I've got the link to the Hack MD. So we've got links in all of these. Um, I believe I've shared the um, uh, this already, but just to be sure, let me put this in chat. Um, there's chat. And folks can take a look at that. So um, those are the options. Our goal is what's the best implementable long-term solution. So this balance between what's the right thing to do in the long term, which is probably a lot closer to what Timo is talking about, but something that's implementable in a short, in a reasonable amount of time, so that the uh, folks doing the code with us is, um, can do can do one of them in a reasonable amount of time and get through it. Um, so RFC 592 or 771 and non-creds attachment is a reasonable way to go from what I was thinking through and, um, um, does allow it. Switching to 771 is not absolutely needed, um, but we could make 592 and 771 handle identically and they just oh, it's either of them, I'll just go forward with that and, and have the attachment handler the same so that we enable a transition. So that if you see a, a, the, the format saying slash indie, then you do it. If it says slash non-creds, you, you use the same handling. So uh, basically a, a 
regex that understands both and 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 leads them to be handled identically. Um, can be used for legacy format and detect format. So we could use content sniffing to tell if it's a an on creds legacy or an on creds W three C format. We could use the MIME type. We could put an explicit flag into them to to determine which what when I receive an attachment, which format it's in. Um, if it's in W three C format, and if there are multiple proofs on it. There would be some extra handling on the holder side um, so that it can be stored in a way that it can be used as an anon creds, um, a non anon creds, in a non creds JSON LD presentation. So, in other words, we want to store it in a way that if the holder gets a presentation exchange request, it can handle it. And if it gets an anon creds, presentation request, it can also handle it. Um, the um, thank you for putting that in Timo about the did binding and the the holder binding method. Um, if we did that on a on an anon creds, there would have to be in the anon creds credential an ID attribute that would be put into the credential subject. In other words, since an on creds is agnostic about any particular field, the only the only field that is it knows about is the link secret that it inserts into it that the um, the issuer doesn't even need to include. If we were to support a multi-proof issuance, and we wanted to include a way to do holder binding of the non and on creds proof. We would have to have a convention that the anon creds credential, the, the, the issuer would insert a ID attribute into the anon creds schema and would use it as a did basically, it would, would insert a did into it to enable did holder binding. So all of that's possible and doable. Um, once we get there, we have, um, as I mentioned, continue to use um, the existing protocols uh, for an on creds presentation, sorry, the existing, uh, existing attachments for an on creds presentation, um, 592 and 771, and we would continue to use 510 diff PE for non and on creds presentation. So this is the fastest, easiest way to do it, but gets us the furthest distance of um, a longer term, does not touch the idea of JWTs or anything like that. So that becomes an entirely separate issue. Um, we could use RFC 593 and 510 for JSON LD alignment. So reminder, RFC 593 is the issuance of a JSON LD W3C VC format VC and was implemented specifically for essentially data integrity proofs that are non and on creds. Um, there is no credential offer in RFC 593. That would have to be added. There is no extra holder binding um, data. Um, in the credential request, as far as I know, and there's certainly not any and non creds um, holder binding information. So that would have to be extended to support the non cred data. Um, using 510, um, oh, also on the issuance, need a way to request multiple signature types and preferences implies that a credential proposal might be useful. Um, something Timo said on his was interesting in that he said um, that it's up to the issuer and not the holder. So maybe this isn't needed at all, that, that it's simply up to the holder, the, sorry, the issuer to decide they're gonna attach multiple um, um, proofs on it. And that could be eliminate the need for this extra piece. Um, 
for presentation, we can do what I said on the previous slide, which is we use uh, 510 if we want a non and on creds W3C format, and we use 592, 771 for and non creds. So, um, respectively, non and on creds and an on creds for the for this. I didn't word that very well, so let me just keep this. Okay. Um, and then the other is, and I, I don't know if you were going down this path at all, Timo, but extending RFC 510 to handle an on creds presentations. And um, that gets kind of ugly. Um, well, I, I mean, it's certainly something we've talked about before. And one of these days we're going to look at it probably in an on creds too. Um, is, is to look at a way to request in an on creds presentation <clears throat> using diff PE by either mapping a diff PE request into an on creds or simply using the diff PE directly to determine the source credentials to use what are the revealed attributes and what are the predicates. Once you know these, um, the process to generate a proof doesn't matter what format the um, the presentation request is in. All that matters is you know what credentials you're using, what you're revealing, and what predicates you're using. <clears throat> it does have an extra holder question because of the DFPE feature of being able to present either VC1 and V2 or present VC3. I mean, and on creds just doesn't have that functionality. And it basically comes down to an extra holder question. Yeah, Timo. Um, so the like the extra holder question. Um, um, how we were we were intending on using diff presentation exchange for the Anocrats presentations. Um, uh, because it supports all the features you need to, because we. It, it wouldn't be a separate like custom, how do we do an Anocrats presentation request? Because it's we could just use the diff PE to filter the credentials. Um, and um, the Anocrats level wouldn't have to know that the initial request was like present VC1 and 2 or V3. But if you have decided based on the diff PE logic, which we already have in place, then you would just construct a request that is either VC1 and 2, or you would construct an Anocrats request that is a request for VC3. And both sides could do that um, based on the credentials that were submitted. So you, because you construct the Anocrats request later than when you have figured out what of the um, constraints you want to uh, uh, like fulfill, uh, it, it won't be a problem. Well, you still have to ask. Uh, I, to me, you, you would still have the code automatically figure out, okay, what can I produce? Can I produce this version or this version? And then you got to ask the person or the entity to say, oh, you, you know, if you, you can you have the option of doing this or this and you have credentials that satisfy both which do you want to do yeah exactly but that is all like diff pe and that is for example in our paradigm wallet we already have that logic so okay. there's nothing okay. so uh, specific to that so that's okay. all before like we just have in storage a credential with a type we don't yes. care that it's anocrats then we construct like everything. Okay, we want to submit these credentials uh, to uh, satisfy this proof request. And then only then we would pass it to the Anocrat specific handler. And then it would know like, all right, based on these two credentials, PC1 and 2, create a proof. Um, and then the verifier would just be like, okay, you chose PC1 okay. and 2. So I know that I need to verify for that requirement. I don't care about PC3 because you... Um, yeah, exactly. VC1 and 2. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so 
So the way you're doing um, this is you're assuming we will use 510 for an on creds and we'll do it this way. In other words, we're not gonna try to map it into an on creds PR. You're gonna do the searching for the credentials based on the diff PE logic, correct? Yeah, so yeah, eventually we will map it to an Anocrats uh, proof request because we need to provide something to the uh, the Anocrats arrest library. Okay. Um, and that, that's, I, but and and that's, that's only the last step, basically. Yeah, that's this question here. Okay, so your suggestion would be to try to do, um, to not do this, to use this, and then we have to figure out this problem, which might take us back to this. But anyway, um, and that's because the presentation request is expected in the non credits W three C V P, right? Do you mean what do you mean with presentation request? So. So to understand it, I get I get a diff PE. We're running out of time. Sorry about this. Let but let's take two more minutes to to see if we can figure this out. I receive a diff PE. I search my credentials using the diff PE directly, which results in me knowing what which source credentials I'm going to prove. What what I'm going to reveal? What predicates I'm going to use? And so with that information, I can generate a, an anon creds presentation. But my understanding is that in the presentation is a presentation, is, is the incoming presentation request in an anon creds legacy format. Is that accurate? Um, no, I, I, I... I had something in our design doc, but I, I can add some more on it specifically. But I think uh, our plan was to just make it a presentation submission from Div PE. Okay. And on the verifier side, you map that to a presentation request. So we could, like, based on the, uh, the identifiers of the um, presentation um, submission, we could consistently map that to a presentation request in Anocrats format. Um, so the uh, holder and the verifier side would be able to construct the same presentation request based on the um, the presentation definition that okay. was um, um, requested. So you only uh, convert at, at the end of the holder and the end of the verifier side, but the other uh, in between you use like diff presentation exchange. Okay, okay, I got it. I'll I'll update this and and try to make sure we're we're connecting right because we have to do this exactly the same in both right so we got to get this right in Akapai and AFJ. Um, just quickly since we are out of time, my concern with the new format would be the time to get it right and complete it as part of the code with us. So that's a balance we've got to figure out. Um, my thought had been to stick with um, 592. So using RF, RFC 593 for issuance is too big a stretch. So stick with 592 for issuing. And then presentations, I was going to suggest we just stick with what we're doing as well, but I could be convinced to go for presentations to go with, um, I, I want to explore this of going with 510 only. Um, so let's go through with that. And then my thought on the new attachment format was give it time to stabilize, keep moving with it, but not part of the code with us. So you're not tied to it. Okay. All right. Well, um, so Timo's saying in the chat that he does not like this idea. <laughs> so um, we'll see how that, let's see how it plays out and, 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 and how well we can define 
either the new new format or a, or another way to do it. I don't think 593 is the way to go um, just because it's missing so much. So it would, to me, it, I'd want to go, if we're going to switch, I would want to go to the new attachment format. So um, let's have that conversation. It's going to have to move into the new year. Um, but um, if we could keep having conversations online and following up. I'm happy to get together for more meetings. Uh, sorry, I was going to say, it, it can't happen in a non-creds meetings. I'm happy to have individual meetings with both teams to, on the code with us directly. So um, just let me know when you want to meet and talk and um, the timing of that. All right. Yeah. I, I, it'd be awesome, Golda, if you and uh, Timo get together with or without me, uh, feel free. And um, I'm happy to, I'll keep thinking through this and, and see what, what I could do to help as well. Yeah. Yeah. If it's okay with guys, then maybe you know, we'll set a meeting that works for us and invite whoever wants to come. Uh, yeah. Super. Okay. Perfect. Whatever timeline, I, again, I'm not sure where everyone is. I know Timo's, um, it's, 11 o'clock at night where he is right now. So there's lots of um, funky times things going on. So I'll leave that to everyone to figure out. And with that, um, we better wrap up. Thanks for this. Much appreciated. That was a great conversation. Take care, all. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.